Rub up your engines! You remember the old Saturn car company? We want to be your car company, that their whole idea was a different kind of car company. Well, the guy behind the whole thing, Don Hudler, just died at 87. GM was coming out of bankruptcy, so they decided GM was going to spin off and make these Saturns, right? And Hudler, who actually was an advertising specialist at GM for a long time, came up with the idea of, let's make these special ones, and it'll be a different kind of car company. And they had deals that once a year, people could come to the factory and talk to each other and see where they are, the cars with plastic panels, plastic doors, so they wouldn't rust, you know, it goes on and on and on. I mean, it was a very good sales PR, I'll give them that. One of the early meetings they had, they had 40,000 people that owned Saturn show up with their cars to see the factory and stuff like that, but unfortunately, it was part of GM. <laughs> <laughs> and GM screwed the whole thing up. They got mad that people thought that was a better idea, and then they took a bunch of the workers from their factory and put them on their own lines and gave them other workers, and then they had a decent, cheap little car, but then they decided, okay, we're going to make six-cylinder ones. Well, they bought this Honda V6, which was a good engine, but Honda uses their own coolant. GM only uses Dex Cool, so that was their coolant. They told Honda, well, we're only going to use Dex Cool. Honda said, you got to use our coolant in your engine, so we're not going to warranty the engines, right? And we won't even sell them to you anymore. Well, GM, you know, typical company with their fingers up their rear ends, said, we use Dex Cool in all our products. We're not buying a special Honda. Then give them engines anymore. Then Saturn started putting in. GM designed V6 engines that were piles of crap and blew up head gaskets. They were horrible engines. And that led to the decline that after a couple of decades, down goes Saturn and they don't exist anymore. Well, Don was the guy behind it all. And I, I got to say, you can't blame him. He was an advertising executive guy. Came up with a good idea, pushed it out. They sold quite a few cars. You know? But GM, of course, in their normal manner, screwed the whole thing up. And even though Saturn was supposedly a different type of car company, it was still owned by GM. And GM screwed the whole thing up. And now they're not around anymore. <laughs> Ah, oh, the poor guy's dead now. He did his PR stuff, you know, and he came up with a good idea. Hey, for 20 years, they sold these things out of nothing. GM wouldn't have muddled with it. It might have succeeded, you know? If they would have kept the Honda engines, they still would have been good cars, you know? But no, the Wits put our own engines in there, pieces of crap, and they blew up, and that's how Saturn went goodbye. Well, now, the man who's the idea behind it, Don he just passed away, so the car's gone and so is he. It says, I got a 2009 Chevy Malibu. I drove to work and I got PO326 code. What could have tripped the code? Should I just replace the knock sensor? Generally, it's the knock sensor going bad. He also asked, would a used one work? No, don't use a used knock sensor. You don't know if this stuff's any good. They're not all that expensive. Get the regular knock sensor and put it on. It could be the knock sensor, could be the wiring. Now, if your engine is really knocking away, you got an engine problem, the sensor's not the problem. If it's running okay, odds are it's the knock sensor. But if your engine's knocking like mad, the sensor's just gonna pick up on the knock and it's gonna send a code for the sensor, the generic code. And if your engine's going knock, 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 you need rods, of changing the knock sensor, you're gonna stop it, right? But if it runs okay, get a new one, put a new sensor, and get an OEM one. Don't go to one of these cheap Chinese ones. They're piezoelectric circuits. If they're not made perfectly, they won't fix the problem. But on the other hand, let's say the car runs perfectly fine and you didn't say uh, if your engine has one where it's under the intake, got to take the intake manifold, it's going to cost a fortune, but it runs okay, you could just live with it. I have customers driving cars with knock sensor causes for a year and they still run perfectly fine. Mike Mustang said, why did Ford discontinue the V6 engine? I got a 2016 Mustang V6, 254,000 miles, doesn't burn oil. Why did they get rid of the V6 and keep the four-cylinder EcoBoost that can't last 60,000 miles without braking? I drive my car like a race car, and it's just as fast as the day I bought it. I don't understand. Why did Ford get rid of the V6? Ratings, gas miles, ratings, stuff. The EcoBoost four-cylinder gets higher ratings. Of course, in the real world, when you drive fast, that goes down the toilet, you get crappy gas miles. But running on a dyno at 55 miles an hour, it gets good gas miles. Now, they're going for power and speed. 300-something horsepower in that four-cylinder one. Yes, they do break down. There's no arguing that. But look at their other ones. They have many V6 EcoBoost engines in trucks and stuff. And a lot of those EcoBoost engines, they fall apart too. They're V6s and they put too much power on them and they burn themselves out. They're all going for turbo power, cheaper way to get power. They know the guys who buy Mustang, you're kind of the rarity. The guys that buy Mustangs, they want the most horsepower forever. So they'll get a four cylinder that's all beefed up or they'll get a big V8 and they'll even beef it up themselves, put it up at five, six, seven hundred horsepower. They're not necessarily going for things that last the longest. Mustangs are basically 
really the only car left that Ford makes. So they're looking more for the racing enthusiasts. They don't care about people that, oh, I'll get a V6 that's good enough. I'll drive it around. You know, they're not interested in that. And it's a thing they play with because it's the only car they make anyway. So they're making their money on trucks and SUVs. Yeah, cars is something they don't even really care that much about. I mean, look at the new Mustang Mach-E. It's not a Mustang. It's an SUV. It's an electric vehicle. It's nothing to do with Mustang. They're just playing on the name and just like with your car, they're playing on the name Mustang and they'll do whatever they feel they can do. It's their company. And if it's planned obsolescence, in the long run, they're happy because then they'll sell another one because the other one broke. Sometimes they go too far and then they won't sell. People say, I'll never buy another one of those EcoBoost. It was a pile of crap. But they don't think that's far ahead. They think, oh, it's good gas mileage. It makes our rating look good. They don't look at the overall picture of people satisfied with a car that lasts a long time. Daniel T says, my light comes on after I change gears. I got a 96 Celica. I accelerate a light with an exclamation pops on. It's the same light pops up when I lose traction. So I thought it was losing traction. Comes up when I change gears accelerating fast. Steering wheel started shaking too. What could it be? You probably got a suspension problem. When you take off, you're going faster. When you shift gears, everything's going to jerk. So if you got a worn tie rod, ball joint, whatever, jack it up. It's got play. You got to fix that play. Wheel bearing. Then your traction light can come on because the sensor in the wheel is acting weird because things are wobbling around. Often it could be a wheel bearing. You're saying your steering wheel's shaking. You got to fix that first. Odds are you fix that. You'll fix the whole thing because the sensors on those are inside the hubs. If the hub starts wobbling around because you got a front end problem, that will trip that light on. And that's probably why it's happening. It's a good thing you told me you had two problems because the second problem could be causing the first light to come on. I see that all the time. Check it to see what's worn. Well, here we go with Tesla again. It seems that the Tesla semi truck, the battery electric truck, the 18 wheeler is starting a limited production run. Now, the one problem is they use these 4680 format batteries, huge batteries, and they've only got a limited production amount that they can build of these huge batteries in the first place. Now, the reason people think that, you know, they're actually being made now is because they see them out and they don't have the manufacturer plates. So when they're testing out stuff, they always have manufacturer plates. So these don't. Now, the guy that took the picture of these things is assuming that these are going to be for regular customers because it doesn't have the manufacturer plates. It's all common practice for these truck manufacturers to give a limited amount of pre-production vehicles to companies to try out. Now, everyone's assuming these are trucks for Pepsi. They made an original order back in 2017. That was quite some time ago for these electric 18-wheelers, right? And it kind of fits in line that the Pepsi CEO said that at the end of December, we're expecting to get some of these electric semis in. So, it's probably for them. Of course, Elon's keeping quiet. You don't want anybody to know what's happening behind the scenes. Is what if these are clunkers and they fail? They don't want you to know. So, they're not jumping out like normally companies would say, look, we've delivered our first electric semis to Pepsi, blah, blah. They might not work. There might be a real problem. Tesla's keeping quiet on the whole thing. Now, of course, these also need what's called a Tesla mega charger, bigger than the chargers they have now to charge these giant trucks up. And Pepsi's just finishing the manufacture of one of these Tesla mega chargers. So obviously it's got to be Pepsi that's getting these trucks. They say that the volume production of the semi is going to be in Texas, where they also say they're going to make the batteries. But they expect the volume production to start in 2023, you know, a couple years. 2017, that was four years ago, things change. Things evolve, right? In Germany, they're using hydrogen fuel cell semis, which makes more sense. Bill Gates said, electric battery semi trucks is stupid. They weigh too much. They got to pull themselves. To pull more weight behind them, they need bigger batteries. Bigger batteries weigh more, so they got to pull more. They cost more money. They're really obnoxious to recharge. Who knows how long these things will last? So it's no surprise that old Elon's not bragging about, I just delivered some trucks to Pepsi. Well, they may not work at all. Maybe in a limited run, a few of them, but no, it's not something that is going to be a mass produced thing that's going to succeed carrying heavy weights with batteries. That's just not logical. I mean, we've carried heavy weights for decades and decades and decades in the United States using electric motors, but those are trains. And they have big diesel engines that generate electricity and then run the electric motors on the diesel trains. Thinking you're going to have these big, giant battery electric trains, that's just plain stupidity. All the weight that they'd have to have to carry, it would be insane how much battery power they need, how long it would take to recharge them, you know. It just doesn't make any common sense when it's a giant commercial enterprise. But, I mean, obviously, in 2017, Pepsi ordered something. They went, they're going 
going to try them out to see. You know, half of this stuff is subsidized by the government. It's in California, and the government subsidizing a bunch of that. I remember way back when Pepsi ordered them, they showed how much money the government was kicking in for this stuff. So, you know, our usual government taxpayer money being thrown out to private enterprise on something that probably isn't a good idea. Battery electric 18 wheelers. It's just too inefficient with the weight and the power and the length it takes them to recharge the batteries. I think this is going to be a massive failure in the long run. Uh, maybe a few places will have them here and there, but it's not going to be a fleet of these things. Like they say in Germany, they're using hydrogen fuel cell cars. It makes more sense. There's less weight, you more power, you get a bigger hydrogen fuel cell. You don't need to keep adding giant heavy batteries that cost a fortune and weigh a lot. And hydrogen fills up real fast, so they can refuel them and keep them going down the road. Makes a lot more sense than a battery semi truck. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.